Um, one of the features that we have in our um, <clears throat> portal application that we've enhanced and updated uh, as part of version 4 is around kind of the natural language searching. Um, so if you look at our search properties page, you'll have a, an option here to kind of turn on use natural language search preprocessing. And what we're basically using here, you'll see reference to Alchemy Web Services API, is <clears throat> we're using, and this is part of um, of IBM and their Watson kind of component. It was a company they acquired uh, called Alchemy. Uh, and basically what they have, and you can go out to their site and kind of experiment with their uh, their API, uh, but basically you can take like a block of text, it'll in essence analyze it, it'll spit back things like the sentiment, is it negative or positive? You know, what's the emotions here in terms of percentages, uh, disgust, anger, uh, one of the main parts we, we leverage in here is really just culling through and pulling out what are the true keywords and, and using those for search. Uh, there's things like entities, so names, people, uh, geographic features, and categories. So the things that we mainly use are the concepts, the categories, uh, maybe the entities and the keywords are oftentimes what we use. And I'll show you kind of where we can take this information and then um, apply it to uh, kind of tuning the ServiceNow search. So first of all, you would need to kind of uh, register an account with Alchemy or IBM, this kind of blue mix. And they have, uh, they have a free kind of component which is more based off of um, the number of transactions, the so number of searches or API calls that you would call during the day. Um, but ultimately, if you're going to use this heavily, you would want to sign up for a bigger, uh, more of a paid account. So I'm going to throw my API key in here uh, and then I'll save this. Some properties to save. A couple other properties I want to head on here. So there is a, um, an age in days of search terms until they are repar reparsed. And what that is is we're using this. If we run a search for um, I need uh, I need a new laptop, for example, as a search phrase, we're going to parse that, run that through the Alchemy API, uh, pull out its different components, and then we're not going to re repost it to the Alchemy API for seven days if someone runs that exact same search. We're basically already pulled back uh, the mapping information we need um, and that can be adjusted so it's kind of using uh, or not re reposting those web service calls if need be for the same search over and over and over again. Uh, we're also defining what do we want to pull out as far as the different components uh, from the Alchemy search. So this is kind of what do we want to evaluate coming through. Uh, so entities, taxonomy, concepts, keywords, uh, also the score kind of filter. So um, if you looked back at our results over here that we had, uh, or the results I had before, they had uh, a score next to them. So we're in essence looking for ones that have a 40% score or greater. So those are the main properties there. So let's run a search and I'll show you kind of um, how this works. So we're in this search for I want an iPad. And I get this little note up here. And part of the reason why we have this note on this page is to highlight kind of how the parser decoded this. Um, so you'll see the search string is iPad is all it's really using there. Um, but it also has a uh, category equal to tablet. So it basically did a mapping of that. And um, we could have done some mapping to isolate this. <clears throat> so that's kind of the engine has been there with, with, uh, with version 3. And we continued the engine going forward. We did improve some of the engine a little bit um, in terms of that searching. But the main thing that we added was now if you come out here and you look at your parse search terms, there's more of a management engine around this. So if I go to something like I want an iPad, I can look at that search. I can see the different factors that came through. I can see what rules have been applied to this, um, as well as I can see if there's other things that came in. These have a low enough score. I can't apply a rule to these because they got filtered out from a threshold perspective. Right, but I can go and look at a couple other searches that we did here, a test ticket for SAP, for example. And so these, by default, one of the things that's happening is when I run a search and it pulls back a keyword with a score greater than 40% or a score 40 or higher, it's going to apply a keyword filter automatically. And you'll see at the bottom here, we show what's the output we got from Alchemy Web Service. So kind of the full data, the entities, etc. And then ultimately what we're going to result this. So you'll kind of see in the end results here, this one's going to pull in a search string of test ticket or SAP. So it's kind of using the keywords here to apply. But if I wanted to map like one of these taxonomies like enterprise resource planning or games lottery to my kind of search results, I can apply a different rule here. So I can come in and say maybe I want to apply a category catalog category filter rule, which is then going to show me my different catalog categories that I've got. And maybe I want to I don't know just apply a benefits rule to this. 
and there's a flag here that says apply this rule to all searches responding to this element and what that means is do I want this to run if I turn this off then I only want this rule to apply for the test ticket for SAP search that is that is conducted but if I say apply to all what I'm basically saying is for this taxonomy of enterprise resource plan anytime any search returns a high score for that taxonomy apply this filter to it so I can make it uh, kind of go across multiple searches so if I save that rule and I'll kind of in essence rerun that now you'll see in my filters it's applying a category equal to that category ID and the search string equal to that so it's in essence providing a deeper level of filter based off of this alchemy mapping and, 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 and componentry here so the other things I can do, so I can from here make a new search. Maybe I want to do something like, who is Donald Trump? Run my search. Again, I'll pull back my web service uh, results here. In essence, what it's going to give me is kind of the information I care about at the top here, which has got categories, it's got keywords, it's got concepts that can be applied, entities, which is kind of a low score here, and some other different categories. <clears throat> And I wanted to bring this one up because there are there are some options here too that I can do. Um, I can actually add, in this case, multiple rules to it. Um, so the way I did this is I could initially added a category filter rule here, and then went in and said add new rule, which means I'm applying two rules to this. And one that maybe in this case I want to filter by card object type. Only want to see maybe catalog items as well. So that's going to then kind of add to the URL. Um, a rule that has uh, filter by category, filter by keyword, um, and then there's another element here too that I can do. You see another rule here for redirect to a specific page, so I can have it go to a different kind of page within ServiceNow as well, or within the portal. Um, so maybe I want to search for something and have it throw the user to the status page, or the My Settings page, or the Get Help page. Um, I have that rule. Now to add even more to this, any of these rules Right, so if I see these rules here, uh, redirect to service portal page, all of these rules are configurable as well. So you'll see an edit rules definition section. And so some of these are going to have like apply card object type filter, apply category filter, knowledge filters. So these apply these filters. Let me show you what one of these look like so you can kind of see the, uh, the structure of this. So the rule has a name, a uh, label that the user sees, active. I'll explain this post-processing rule in a moment. <clears throat> and then if it's got a component where we want to select from a table uh, to pick the actual value for the filter, like we do in the case of show me a catalog category that I want to associate to this, we have this show reference, what's the reference table, what's the field we're going to display. But then ultimately in the rule script, what we want to do here is we want a result, we're basically passing back an answer. And the answer has a couple properties to it. One is a filter, which is what's the filter name, what's the value, what's the display value that we want to, um, to send back. Some of the other answers on these rules are going to be like um, a page. So I can show you like the redirect to a service portal page it's going to have an answer of SP page. So if that's specified, then it says, oh, let's go redirect my search uh, to, or redirect the user to a different page. And the same thing you can do for like the answer SP page, you can also send them to a different URL as well and kind of pass within there some sort of value that you want to actually provide or, or, um, uh, or send the user to say, an external URL. So there's some options there. So I mentioned the post. I was going to mention the post processing rules. So this, um, some examples here is take this rule. That's a post processing rule. So what this is is more of the timing. So instead of associating this rule to a specific search, um, it's it's going to apply this rule to uh, to the overall kind of macro evaluation of, of, the, of the data or the components, the attributes that come back from the search. So some of the things that it's going to, like this particular case, one of the things that it's going to do here is if I see a search that contains a keyword of status and either a keyword of requests or request, then I'm going to apply a filter for the card object type of being request. 
I'm also going to send the user to the check status page. So what we're basically saying here is if you find a combination of two keywords, say the status keyword and the request or request category or request keyword, send the user to the check status page and filter the results by request. Same thing for status, incidents, and incidents. So I can see that, for example, if I were to go look at um, what is the status of my request. This one has a couple applied uh, filter rules, but ultimately it associated this to this redirect uh, to the status page rule as a post-processing rule. Um, and that's where it ended up basically setting the URL to the check status page and kind of filtering by type of incident. So that is in essence the, you know, kind of the core of this that I wanted to show in terms of being able to have a more of a management page where you can go and define uh, the different uh, types of rules that you want to apply to the individual searches or search result components. Um, and one thing to one thing you can obviously highlight here or note is that you can run these searches yourself in advance, tag and codify how you want them to uh, process. So if you know a particular search that you want to send a user in a certain direction, like send them to a get help page, um, if they're doing a particular search for email, um, then you can run those search kind of phrase, tag the different components, and then when they go, when the users go run those searches, that'll uh, you know, kind of direct them where you want them directed. So I hope this helps, uh, and I hope you find value in this feature and using the kind of natural language parsing to your uh, to your search improvement and benefits. Thank you.